Hey guys, welcome back to the Cookie Chronicles. After three weeks, five recipes, it's time for the final episode. So the question is, after testing some of the internet's most popular and most viral chocolate chip cookie recipes, which is my favorite, and what did I learn? Now, that's actually more complicated to answer because really, I'm not sure there's such thing as the best chocolate chip cookie recipe. Each of the recipes I've made in this series have been delicious, and I would make every single one of them again. But each of them had things that I loved about them that I'm gonna see if I can take, smush together, and form what is, for me, my perfect chocolate chip cookie. So for this recipe, I loved its kind of nostalgic feel, its simplicity, and of course it is the original chocolate chip cookie, so we're gonna stick with its drop cookie style. So this cookie, the pan banging cookie, I'm gonna keep the pan banging because I loved the texture it gives to the edge of the cookie. It can take a slightly chewier cookie and add this crisp edge, which I love. So this recipe, I love its style and its simplicity. By using melted butter, it makes it incredibly easy, so we're definitely keeping that. With this recipe, because it's a slice and bake cookie, we're not gonna take the dough, but we are gonna take a big tip from it, and that is the use of salted butter. Because it gets mixed into the dough, it seems to flavor the dough a little bit better. So we're gonna do that as well. So this final recipe from Bon Appetit, it also uses melted butter like Tara O'Brady's recipe, but it takes it one step further and browns it, and that is another level of flavor and something that I love, so we're gonna do that as well. So now we know what we're gonna borrow from the five previous recipes, we need to think about how we're gonna put this recipe together. So the ingredients for my perfect chocolate chip cookie are very classic, very familiar ingredients. They're, they are basic ingredients that we've used the last three weeks for all of our recipes. But there are a couple of differences. Firstly, the butter is salted, which we're gonna then brown. And then we're also gonna add some egg yolks along with our whole eggs, because I think those extra egg yolks can really add an extra level of fudginess to the recipe. So the first thing we need to do for this recipe is take our salted butter and brown it. Now I've already showed you how to do that earlier on in the series, but I'm gonna give you a quick reminder. Add the butter to a pan. Place it over medium heat until melted. Cook until the milk solids separate, and then foam, and then cook until the milk solids underneath that foam have browned. So just a quick note on browning salted butter, because it does behave differently from unsalted butter. It'll go through the same process, but when it gets to the foaming, that foam will kind of hang around on the surface, and you need to make sure that you mix this constantly because there's a chance that the salt will clump with the milk solids, so you wanna make sure it's distributed evenly. Also, because the foam doesn't dissipate as easily, you need to make sure that the browning is happening whilst the foam is still there. So the easiest way to do that is by smell, but also if you lift your silicon spatula out of the heat, you'll be able to see the little bits of brown on there as well. So once the butter is brown, we need to pour that into a large bowl to stop it cooking immediately. We're then gonna let it cool down for a couple of minutes. At this point, the recipe should feel very familiar because it uses the same basic method we've seen in Tara O'Brady's recipe from last week and the Bon Appetit recipe from Tuesday. So all we're gonna do is whisk in our sugar, mixing it until it's roughly combined, and then working one at a time, we're gonna add our eggs and our egg yolks, followed by the vanilla. At this point, we're gonna to switch to our spatula, add the dry goods, and mix those together to combine. Once our flour is mixed in, we can talk about chocolate. So throughout this series, I've used either the Qatar wafers all the chocolate chips, and I'm really stuck about which one to choose, because I've loved all of the recipes using both of them. So I'm not gonna make a decision. I'm gonna make versions with both styles. But what I have done with each type of chocolate is I've taken a small amount of it and roughly chopped it. And that's gonna go into the dough with the whole pieces because it's gonna give us a nice uneven texture and that means we get different variations of chocolate throughout the recipe. So we're going to add our chips to one half of the dough. 
and just mix that to combine. And the wafers to our second portion of dough. Obviously, if you want to make just one batch, just add one style of chocolate to the whole batch. So now that our cookie dough is nice and cold, we can form them into cookies. Now, we've had the dough in the fridge for about four hours, so it's nice and cold, it's firm, but it's not rock solid, it's still pliable. So what we're gonna do is form into balls that are about 85 grams per cookie. So you can use a scoop, or you can do this by hand as well. And we're just gonna form them into cookies, sprinkle them with a little bit of flaked sea salt, and then they're gonna go in the oven. The oven needs to be preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius, and they're gonna go in there for about 18 to 20 minutes. These are slightly bigger cookies, and they take a little bit longer, and we want to make sure that we get a nice crisp edge. But don't worry, these still have that beautiful, soft, chewy inside. To get that pan banging effect, once the cookies have been baking for about 10 minutes, remove from the oven and give a firm wrap on the work surface. Do this every two minutes until the cookies are golden brown. So that is how you make my perfect chocolate chip cookie. It's incredibly easy to make and absolutely delicious. You still get that beautiful fudgy middle, it's got a nice hit of salt and it's got real nice crisp edges. It's so, so delicious and I'm so happy with this recipe. I also wanted to say a big thank you for supporting this series. It's the first time I've done something kind of this long, this big on the YouTube channel, and you seem to have really liked it, so thank you very much. Um, if I did another version of this series, but not a cookie this time, a different style of recipe, what would you like me to try? Leave me a comment down below. I also wanna say a big thank you to Guitar Chocolate for partnering with me to produce this series. The only question left is, do I prefer the ones with wafers, or the ones with chips? Or do I turn it into an ice cream sandwich? Either way, I'm off to eat more chocolate chip cookies. Until next time, I'll see you later.